Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard New York Jets News, hosted by Jude Jets, the best darn place for some Jets news. Enjoy your flight. What's good, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the New York Jets Daily Recap. I'm your host, Jude Jets. And before we get started, 80% of you who watch my videos are not subscribed, so make sure to hit that subscribe button. And without further ado, let's get started. If the New York Jets have the first overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, we are most likely going to draft Trevor Lawrence because if Donald's going to lead us to an own 16th season, he doesn't look like our starting quarterback. And even if he doesn't lead us to an own 16th season and we have the first overall pick, I think drafting Trevor Lawrence would be the safest option because he is generational talent. Now, I'm not giving up on Donald yet. I want us to keep him until his working contract expires, just to see how we can do under a good head coach and legit, and have, you know, decent receivers. Um, <laughs> because Chris Hogan was his best receiver at one game, which is pretty bad. But, according, so if the case is drafting Trevor Lawrence, having Darnold around isn't the best idea. So what are we going to do with him? Trade him for a first overall, not for a first overall pick, trade him for a first round pick? would be your answer? Well, according to Adam Schefter, NFL executives don't believe the Jets are going to get a first round pick out of Darnold. This confuses me because the Cardinals were kind of in the same situation a couple years ago, or last year to be exact. They drafted Josh Rosen to be their franchise quarterback, but he looked like a stinker. They had the first overall pick and Kyler Murray was a dual threat quarterback and Cliff Kingberry really liked him. They draft Kyler Murray, and they trade Josh Rosen and get a second-round pick and a fifth-round pick. I thought the Jets could get a first-round pick because Darnold is a great quarterback and is better than Lawrence. He's not great, but he's better than Rosen. But it looks like we're going to get a second. So there's that. Maybe we could get a good upcoming receiver or a fourth-round pick in return going along with that second. Or maybe an NFL team who's needy, who needs a quarterback like the Colts, like the Bears, like the Saints, might be willing to offer a first round pick just so they could secure Donald. But I don't know. Now if we do, if we don't have the first overall pick, because the Giants are actually projected to get the first overall pick, because they have the weaker strength of schedule. You know, both the New York teams, besides Buffalo, were supposed to go 0 16. That's pretty bad. We're not supposed, but we're projected to go 0 16. That's really bad. And Trevor Lawrence might be the option for the Giants because Daniel Jones might not look like the starter for them. And I don't think we should draft Lance or Fields. I feel like Donald's a safer option. Um, and it's probably going to be better than them in their NFL careers. But Lawrence is just generational talent, and he's the best prospect since Andrew Luck. And I think Andrew Luck could have been a Hall of Fame QB if not being injured so much. But it looks like the Jets might not be able to get a first round pick in a Sam Darnold trade, so there's that. First Jamal Adams, now Le'Veon Bell. He wants out of New York, Bell. That's some disheartening news. Now, he hasn't came out with an official statement saying he wants to come out of New York, but after yesterday's game, he liked several tweets that said that the Jets should trade him. He also liked a lot of other tweets saying that Gates does not know how to use him and that the Jets don't use him properly. So, it's pretty clear he wants out in New York. Now, he hasn't talked to Adam Gates, or Adam Gates hasn't talked to him yet. But it looks at this point that towards the trade deadline, Bell might be out of here, which is sad because I thought he played well. Um, he only had 13 carries and he had 60, 60 yards. That's better, I mean, than last year. We're not, we'll put it in perspective. He had good yards per carry. He had 4.6 while he had, you know, three points something last year. So he looks like under the a good offensive line, if he gets more touches, he could have 100 yards. Um, but the main problem with us not using Bell much is because we didn't use him in the past game a whole, whole lot last year. And we were going to, you know, use him in the past game more this year, but we only gave him, we only threw it to him once. <laughs> That's not using him more in the past game. Gay says not using Bell much was just because of how the game was going. 
I mean, Bell's one of the best receivers you have on the field, and he doesn't even play receiver. He's not better than Crowder, and he's probably not better than Hogan at receiver, but he's better than some of those other guys. Maybe not Berrios, but he could be a starting receiver in the NFL. I mean, Bell is just a good receiver and a good running back, and that's why we're excited to have him, but if Adam Gase is not going to use him that way, the way he's supposed to be used, well, then why have him on the team? Just trade him. I mean, why not? He wants to be out of here. And the, he's probably also mad that he almost got the same amount of carries as a 37-year-old running back. So, After the Falcons started 0-5, they decided to fire their head coach, Dan Quinn, and they also fired the general manager. This is the second NFL team to fire their head coach so far this season. The other team being the Houston Texans to fire their head coach slash general manager, Bill O'Brien. Both of these head coaches have done pretty good things with these NFL teams. Bill O'Brien winning the AFC South multiple times, and Dan Quinn leading the Atlanta Falcons to the Super Bowl, and he also made it to the playoffs a couple of times. Now, the New York Jets are, are the other team who has a coach on the hot seat, that coach being Adam Gase. If he's not fired by now, I don't even think we're ever going to fire him because, God, he is just a bad coach. And if Christopher Johnson hasn't seen it by now, I don't think he will ever see it. I think he will come to his senses at the end of the season and fire him. But we never fired a coach in the, you know, midseason before, and I don't think we're going to start this year, which is sad to say, but it's true. Um, I mean, people are flying banners over the stadium when we did that last year to fire Gase. They're starting petitions. It's crazy to how he's not fired. It's crazy. You know, he has the same amount as wins as double-digit losses. And he's not fired. It's insane. Now, if the Jets are planning to fire him on the bye week, that might come sooner because our bye week got moved to week 10. The NFL made some schedule changes, you know, yesterday because of coronavirus, and the Jets were one of the teams that got affected in the schedule changes. So our game in Miami against the Dolphins was in week 10, but it got moved to week 6. Our bye week moves from week 11 to week 10, and our game against the Chargers moves to week 6 to week 10. So those are some schedule changes for the New York Jets, and the firing of Adam Gates might come sooner than later, so that's some good news. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, go Jets. Peace.